Today we're going to use a couple different techniques for texture. We're going to make a woolly mammoth. We're going to have different texture on our big guy. Just like texture on my sushi here. So have fun learning new things. Making a woolly mammoth with me. Let's learn a little bit about the woolly mammoth. It is an extinct species of the elephant that lived during the prehistoric times and were commonly featured in cave art. Woolly mammoths were covered in fur so they were prepared for cold, especially during the last ice age. Their long tusks were useful for searching and hunting for food. There's a little picture, a little drawing of a cave art and some realistic pictures, picture on the top and a sketch on the bottom. And a fun fact, a newborn woolly mammoth cap weighs over 200 pounds. This drawing is gonna be a little bit different than we have done in the past. This is gonna be very loose and a very sketchy project. So here's my example of my woolly mammoth. And again, I'm just going to make it very loose. We don't want it perfect because we're going to use a different, two different types of texture marks. So pretend your paper is cut in half, just like I'm doing to this guy right here. Or you can, in fact, fold it in half. Make sure you're do, you do it um, vertical. So I have an imaginary line going down the middle and very roughly we're going to do two eyes in the middle, one on each side of our line. If you need, again, make your fold line if you need to. And go ahead and use your Sharpie. You see I don't have a sketch before. I'm just roughly drawing it with my Sharpie. Start with the eye in the center. We're just going to go around. We're going to make two big lumps way on the top of its head. And we're just going to sketch it down, sketching it, making loose little marks. But even with this second eye here, I'm just going to sketch a big ear, the backwards three almost, and make a middle. And notice my lines are not perfect. We have texture lines and techniques to cover our not perfect lines and just go down and around and then stop there and let's go on the other side of his face and just go down a little bit and now let's make his first tusk under the second eye i'm going to go all the way down and i'm going to loop it all the way up to the end of my paper seal off my shape and again, a big tusk line to match and make it skinnier at the end. Kind of like a J almost. And behind that is his tusk. So I'm just gonna go in lightly with a line for his tusk. Again, let me remind you, do not have this perfect. Mine is not perfect. Our texture lines will add a whole bunch. Next, let's make our second tusk off of that. Just like that, we'll go up and just kind of copy the second one. And then behind that, we're going to finish our tusk. Or excuse me, our trunk. So this is, I went down and I'm doing one leg and off of that leg is where my trunk is going to end. So if you see, I'm just looping it up, sketching it ever quickly, not taking too much time because again, this is a rough sketch. So we're going to close up our shape there for his trunk. And we're gonna work on his feet and his legs. Finish the leg we went down with first. And oftentimes it is, they're wider at the bottom. 
I'm gonna make two, or no, four, excuse me, four marks for his toes. Make our next, I'm just gonna do three feet. So I want the illusion that he is walking. So, so do the same thing on this next one, just go up. Make his body sealed across there over his trunk. Another little body mark, and we're gonna have one more leg. Again, we want the illusion that he is walking, so I'm not adding my fourth leg. And then down, make four more toes on that one. And we're gonna make a little tail for him off of his bum, just like that. And we're gonna seal it. Quick sketch with a Sharpie. Okay, the next step is to give your woolly mammoth a form by shading using hatching and cross hatching techniques for texture. So I'm gonna start off with the hatching technique. Hatching technique is when short lines are placed close together, anywhere you add hatching on your woolly mammoth, it will make your area look shaded. If you create the lines that are far apart, the area will have a light value. So the more lines you put together, the more shaded it will be. If your hatch lines are close together, your area will appear darker, which will make it look more shaded. So on top of its head, you can see there's marks in between my hatching. I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna just make hatching marks all around my woolly mammoth, around his eyes and around some, his top of its head and up down his trunk. Now you see here, when I go down his trunk, if I do the hatching closer together, it appears that it has a darker value. It's more shaded. So again, the closer your lines, the more shaded or darker it looks. You can see the difference there, and I curved it around with the trunk. Where his trunk meets his body, I put it a little bit closer as well to show that it is more shaded. So I'm gonna go all the way down his body with my hatching technique for, for texture. Now for the, the tusks, I'm gonna use a cross hatching. Cross hatching is taking hatching to the next level. This one is one of my favorites. After you add hatching to an area, Cross the area again with hatching that goes in the other direction. So it's almost like you're making big X's. You can add layers of cross hatching to an area to give the appearance of a dark shadow. I'm gonna use this hatching, cross hatching technique for the bottom of my tusks. And you see, I'm going the extra, extra small to make it look more like there's more of a shadow on that tusk. And again, this is one of the funnest techniques. You can use cross hatching and hatching in any of your drawings. So I'm gonna do cross hatching on the bottom, going one way and then crossing it over the other way, just like that. So I'm gonna use these two techniques, my hatching and my cross hatching, and I'm gonna do different areas in my drawing. So have fun adding your texture mark.
Now that we have our texture lines just about complete, I'm gonna make a background to my woolly mammoth. You can choose to make an icy tundra background or a forest. I decided to use a background of a blue sky and clouds and, the, and grass for the bottom. So I'm just gonna go up and do a curved line for my clouds. And again, adding some texture marks in there as well. Make a horizon line behind my woolly mammoth. And then I'm gonna go through and add some texture lines and then we should be ready to paint. Now I'm ready to start painting my woolly mammoth. The first technique I'm gonna use is called a wet brush technique. So I'm gonna fill his whole entire background, just the part I want blue, my sky. I'm just gonna get water on my paint brush it's hard for you to see on my paper here, but I just have water. There's no paint left on my brush yet. After I paint the background with water, I'm just going to add some blue paint to my brush. And that kind of makes, kind of smears it a little bit on the parts where I have already got it wet. And that kind of makes a cool illusion of the background sky. Just like that, that is called a wet brush technique. So again, just do water in the back, add your paint and see where it goes. It shouldn't go anywhere past where you've added your water. After I'm done with this, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. We've done some salt before with our snowflakes. I'm gonna add some salt to the background of my woolly mammoth. And that just adds some more texture, a little bit of sparkle. Apply your salt again while it is still wet. You wanna use this technique for that. Okay, now that I've finished with my background, I'm gonna mix my colors a little bit. You can add the straight color out of your watercolors, but it is nice to add some depth, some dimension to your watercolors. So I'm just gonna add some green right here on next to my watercolors. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of brown and I'm gonna get a different color, a, a color that shows us a little bit of depth so my grass, I like that color. So the grass, it has kind of a brownish green. Instead of just a straight green, I'm just gonna mix my colors a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same when I get to my woolly mammoth. I'm gonna add some brown with just a touch of black to it. Again, you can make your woolly mammoth any color you want. I just find adding the colors a little bit adds just a little, makes it a little bit more interesting. So go ahead and finish your woolly mammoth draw your painting. Mix some colors, add some warmth. I'm gonna add some warmth on his back, a little bit of orange, add some detail to him and come back.
techniques are so much fun when you texture a project. I practice it all the time. It's super fun in anything you do. Well, friends, see you next time. Bye-bye.
Now that our woolly mammoth is all painted, one more technique you can do to add a little bit more texture to your painting is to fill your paintbrush with green or brown and make just little swoop marks going up. Don't press your paintbrush down very, very hard. Just swoop it up and that gives texture lines that there is grass there. Again, just swoop it up and that's just a little fun technique as well. And as always, don't forget to sign it.